So with the face done, got to start working on everything else. And now we're going to be painting the body, of course. Uh, this is actually my second time painting the body. Uh, the first time I was kind of... Well, I've been watching the Batman Blu-rays every single night for about a month now. And I thought I had the colors for the outfit pretty well down. But I didn't use a visual reference while I was painting it and uh, first I thought I did it too dark and so I lightened it up and I thought it was still not light enough and I lightened it up again and I realized I was way off um, so I ended up stripping everything and decided to redo it um, for unfortunately I had to mix up my own paints because I didn't have anything really to match and we're gonna be doing a, a lot of mixing here and going over colors because in the kit the colors are as basic as you can get. It says light gray for his bodysuit, dark blue for everything else, and that's all it gives you, and that's not really correct. Um, it's hard to tell in the Blu-rays, but because the, the outfits tend to change color slightly, and I think that's part of the restoration and the lighting that was filmed underneath, not necessarily that they changed the costume during the show. But uh, for the back here, which I already tested it out, they say just light gray, but it is actually a closer to a medium gray and it's a very very cool medium gray and to make that uh, I'm using Oxford blue mixed with some game color cold gray it's about I'd say 70% Oxford blue though so um, that gives us this nice cool color so let's go ahead and do this It's a little too thick. Ah, my paint's too thick. Alright, sorry I cut that last part a little bit short. Uh, it wasn't that my paint was too thick. Turns out uh, I must have had dry paint. I think it was in the Oxford Blue and it totally gunked up my airbrush and uh, it just starts spitting out crap all over. Um, you can use Vallejo paint to airbrush but it separates and just the pigment sinks to the bottom of the cup right away so you you have to keep it stirred up but you can't just stir up the your cup by backwashing or stirring with a toothpick you really have to dump it out and store it stir it in a separate container and pour it back in you have to do that every couple minutes um, that really wasn't the issue though well part of the issue it was but the uh, fact is there was uh, dried paint in the paint and they were just spitting stuff out, and so was, there was a lot of spitting and cursing going on. Uh, but tr I, didn't, I was looking for something to thin the paint out, like a mesh screen, but I couldn't find anything fast enough. And I didn't have enough to try again, so long story short, here we are. We have our Oxford Blue, <clears throat> excuse me, and our uh, Cold Gray, and then highlighted just slightly with a little bit of white. So that's done. We're back to the oils now. And using a mix of uh, black, white, and blue, just to mix up a shade here for the bodysuit. I initially did not want to use oils on the uh, the bodysuit because of the issue with. Um, I wanted this thing to be the bodysuit was made was made out of wool, so I wanted matte. And since you're not supposed to put acrylic varnishes over oils. I was hoping just to avoid this so I wanted to deal with that issue but there are some folds on this thing that need extra shade and I'm going to try to put a varnish on it anyway um, simply because this is so thin I don't see it being an issue really. It's not like I got oil paints gooped onto it. Just a very thin transparent layer so I'm hoping it won't matter. Um, the other thing I was going to mention, which I apologize if I mentioned this earlier, but I've kind of redone several parts of this thing, so maybe repeating myself. I don't know what's going to be edited in. But I uh, wanted to talk about contrast. Hang on. There we go. Um, the whole point of painting, painting highlights and shades is to add contrast to your models and or miniatures and if you're a, mainly a miniature painter like I am that tiny little figure needs a lot of contrast because you need to add um, 
you have to make the uh, the details more pronounced because it's such a small miniature. But as you go up in scale, you can reduce the amount of contrast. So if this Batman here was 28 millimeter, we'd have to add a lot of highlight and shading for contrast. But if he was 1-1 one, one scale, full size, six foot, we wouldn't have to add any because there would be the the folds and the highlights would be enough for the edges <clears throat> would be enough to catch the natural lighting in the room. So you just have to paint them all in one color because uh, we're doing a one what is this guy one eighth scale. We have to add some highlighting and shading, but not as much as if this was a much smaller miniature. Makes sense. Now, we need a mask off so we can paint boots, gloves, and undies. And I kind of consider not even doing the masking, just doing it by hand, which um, I could go either way with it. Uh, just because the masking around the uh, gloves is going to be a little difficult. But uh, to me, a tape. Remove some of the tackiness and then take a brand new exacto knife and just very lightly go along the seam of where the boot and the leg meet. Obviously you don't want to cut too deep but <clears throat> because it's on the seam and I'm an idiot and I'm pulling out the wrong part. <laughs> Moron. Pull off the part attach the boot. See what happens when you try to talk and model at the same time? You make mistakes. So, there we go. Just a little more tape there. And then I'm going to use painter's tape for the rest because that's a cheaper option. We are on to his cape now. And it is a very, very, very dark blue. The only color it um, seems to reflect is from the, the shiny nature of the uh, I'm assuming satin it was made out of. And for that, we're using Stormy Blue, which is the darkest blue I have at the moment, um, which we'll have to do. Uh, but we're gonna cut that, instead of thinning it with standard airbrush thinner, we're gonna thin it with some uh, Badger Minotaur Ghost Tint Midnight Blue. And this is essentially pretty much the same thing as an ink. And um, I'm gonna use this to thin it to uh, uh, thin the Stormy Blue because this adds a nice richness to the color. Uh, I would prefer to just put this on by itself after applying the Stormy Blue, but um, spraying this stuff is a little difficult on a, such a large, flat surface uh, because the more you spray, the darker it gets. Um, so trying to get it perfectly even across the whole cape uh, is not impossible. Let's get to it. Now, I don't want to overdo the highlights on the cloak because I do want to keep it dark, So, but I do want to add a little bit of highlight. So we're going to go again with the Stormy Blue, uh, but this time mix it with uh, regular blue ghost tint. Got the pressure down a little lower now as well, and I'm doing it very subtle. One of the interesting things I noticed on the Blu-ray of the Batman TV series I didn't notice before in the crappy you can only find on TV um, was that in the instructions and as far as I knew uh, Batman's outfit, the darker parts, were all a very dark blue. But if you watch the Blu-ray it's pretty clear that the cape and the rest of his outfit is a slightly different color. His boots, his... Uh, undies and the cowl are all have a slight purple tinge to them so that is what we're doing now I'm taking the same stormy blue that I had before but instead of thinning it with the blue ink or tint 
and the midnight blue we're gonna use purple this time so it's got the same base color but the tint is gonna well tint it a slightly different color For the highlights for the boots, again, very dark area on the figure, so we want to keep it dark. Um, thought it might be to tone down the purple, so it's just like a little tint of purple. I'm going to highlight with blue. I would like to just add more stormy blue uh, into my mix here. That will help to mute out the purple. However, I ran out. So, um, since we're only going to add a little bit, I had to switch to dark Prussian blue. And uh, just the same mix I was already using. So that helped disguise some of the purple. And just spraying from the top. We are back to the desk. And back to the oil paints again. Adding a little bit of depth to all the blue stuff. Um, just use a straight black here, and you probably can't see much because this is very dark. I'm actually even having, in reality, real life here, looking at them, kind of struggling to see things because it's really just absorbing all the light. But. Uh, we're just doing the black here. I don't think I'm going to do any highlights with the oils on here, mainly because we are going to gloss it, and those uh, won't be visible, or I should say, I'm allowing the gloss, you know, to take care of the highlights. And I am using my finger a bit for the take off the oils as well, since I want the um, the black just in the recesses here. So, Mr. Fingers is working pretty well. At least we're getting close here. So it's been about a week. I've been waiting for the oil paint shade that I did on all the blue and purple-ish areas to dry. And of course during that time I uh, started looking at it and thinking of other things I can do and so decided I could use a bit more highlight. So back to the oil paints again. I already did the boots and the other purple areas and working on the cloak now. Larger areas I find out works a lot better if you use a larger brush to work everything in. But, uh, by the way, we're using a straight blue now, uh, specifically French Ultramarine. And then I just worked some red into that to highlight the other areas because I didn't have any purple oil paint. But anyway, want to talk about something. That is a bit important, which I know a lot of people are probably commenting on before they even get to this part of the video. Batman's uh, color of his costume here, the bodysuit areas, the wool areas. Uh, now, I know a lot of you are thinking that should be light gray in color. And well, you're right for the most part. So I gotta explain, this is gonna be a long-winded and fairly boring story, but I've been watching the Batman Blu-rays, and um, I thought it was a light gray suit or a, with a slight blue, a cool light gray suit. So I painted the bodysuit that color and finished it up, and then I went to watch that night my Batman, uh, I know I watched it on the computer instead of the TV like I was, and then I noticed that the suit was actually a more of a, a darker gray and very very cool so it was like a very cool medium gray so I stripped the whole thing down repainted it the color you currently see and um, finished that up and then I went to watch Batman again and I'm like no wait it's light gray I had it right the first time so I was really confused and you might be thinking that while well, I was watching it from two different sources which I was doing and that um, you know, the color composition on either my TV or my computer was way off. However, if you go to Google Images right now and search for Adam West Batman images, and you will see that the suit indeed 
rapidly, or not rapidly, but um, dramatically changes colors in each photo. It goes anywhere from a very light gray without any hints of coolness or blue in it to a medium gray that's very cool and a lot of different colors in between. And so, very confusing. What I think the issue is, is not the restoration that changed the colors, but it's the lighting they used on the show. In any of the outdoor scenes where there's sunlight, the bodysuit looks very light gray and there's no blue in it whatsoever. But indoor scenes, uh, it gets a lot darker, uh, especially in some of the areas like in, um, I was referencing the very first episode in Commissioner Gordon's office. And if you go and look at that episode, this color here, I swear to you, it's dead on what the color is supposed to be. Uh, so apparently the lighting on the show, what they did, it just kind of changes things. So it could look anywhere between a light gray and a, a darker gray and a more blue gray. So the color that I did not mine, while technically is accurate, it's not traditional. Uh, if you're looking to do a more traditional color Batman, yeah, it should be light gray. Now, if you want to do it a cool light gray or just a regular light gray, you know, that's up to you. Uh, if I had to do it again, yeah, I would do it light gray, but the color I picked is, it is accurate. I, it's a dead on, shoot, hang on. It's a dead on, uh, oh, hang on a second here. I got a little boo-boo I gotta fix. It's a dead on, um, color to the very first episode where you very first see Batman's outfits in Commissioner Gordon's office, but it just... Again, I, I'll say it's not accurate because it's not the one we're all familiar with and eight of the ten pictures you'll find is of a light gray suit. So if you're doing it at home, I definitely recommend doing going for a light gray. Um, I'm not going to redo mine because I already redid it once. Um, maybe when I get to the eighth model in this series, I'll go back and redo it. But we're sticking with the color we got right now. 